Hello there, Internet. I am Eichenbahn of Lux and Hemlock, and uh, this is going to be my first attempt at a review for a book, a novel. Um, we're going to be reviewing As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. And uh, I, I've been reading this book kind of off and on for a little while. Uh, I've been uh, taking with me to the bar, and I started reading it after um, my... Uh, one of my close aunts uh, passed away from COVID um, recently, and um, for me that was a devastating period. She was a very important figure in my in my livelihood. She taught me a lot about um, art, and she uh, encouraged me to do things like like read and to to draw. And she was a very important figure. And, um, I'm, I, I just kind of found this book at like a thrift store. Um, like I've always loved Faulkner, but I've not read this one. I actually kind of had been like not wanting to read this one because it's so well known and so many people have, uh, great reviews for it and that they have like a, a great deep appreciation for this book. Um, and so I was a little bit scared to kind of pick it up because, uh, it's, I don't want to say it's common, but it's, uh, you know, I, I, I wanted, I like to read things that are a little bit out of the, the normal experience just because, just because, um, but I decided to read William Faulkner as I lay dying. And, um, this, this fucking book is, oh, holy God, holy God, what can Wow! Like, holy fuck! Um, it's hard to even, like, express it in, like, terms, because there's so many different variables, so many different, like, layers to this book. And the first thing is that, like, it really triggered, like, it, it brought, I mean, it has scenes of, like, funeral rites and people coming together and women singing, singing hymns and, uh, I mean, it's the, the very, the first half of the book is, undeniably beautiful it really it really grabs your heartstrings and starts to rip them apart and show you this family that is just i mean torn to pieces by this uh matriarchal figure uh Addie burton who has like passed away and is i mean for the large portion of the first part like she's alive and like she's watching one of her sons like make her coffin you know like she's She's deliberately, like, every single slice of it, every single piece that is being made, she's, like, looking over and, um, like, making sure that it's exactly to her, exactly to what she knows that her son Cash can make. And, and then she dies. And um, I, I don't want to give too much away. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious that she's going to pass away. You'll find that out. I mean, very, very quickly. But what happens afterward is a tale of, I mean, biblical level plague and destruction. This family is destroyed. Every semblance of what they think is right or what they think is wrong is being wiped away. It's as if, I mean, it's very literally as if God is against them. And you don't understand why until you get to the end. And it's the end, folks. It's it's the fucking end of this this book that is just so unbelievably dark. Um, I mean, it is so cynical. It is so dark. It is so unfathomably just like majestically bad, <laughs> majestically dark that it it will curl your blood um at least it curled mine um to the point where i got i got to like you know this night like this is very early in the morning i mean five o'clock in the morning where i'm like i like couldn't put it down i read like almost 60 to 100 pages just now just to get to the end and because it like it starts to take this strange turn that you would not that you would never expect but just that like Whew, oh man, 
And the uh, the social resonance of this is like this book was written in the late twenties, like in the air, like the Great Depression when the stock market just crashed. And so, like in nineteen thirty, I think uh, this book was originally printed. Uh, so nineteen thirty, like during the Great Depression, this motherfucker writes maybe the darkest novel that I've ever read in my entire fucking life. I mean, it's not even, it's not trying to be horror. It's really not. It's, it's not even, you know, like, from today's standards, what's going on in this book is kind of like small time, like small scale. But the, the absolute human indignity that is imparsed in this, and like the very, very subtle things you would never expect them. Um, you're, when you're reading the early chapters, you'll see like certain instances and characters talking about, um, talking about things, and you have no idea. You have no idea what is like the real subtext to that. And the thing is, it gets so fucking bad. It gets so ridiculously. I mean, this is like soul crushing. Um, what is going on in this book at the end? Um, and you, you never expect it. You would never expect that it's going to get this fucking, this dark, this bad, this quick. What is going on? Um, it's, I mean, I don't know. Like it's, it's great in this sense of like, like, wow, like whew. it's like eating a hot pepper, you know, like you, you don't expect the heat that you're about to get off of it. And this book fucking has it. It is just, man, it's sizzling with it. Like, you're, you're left with this ashen taste in your mouth from the, the, the horror that you just experienced because it hits so fast, and suddenly you realize all the motivations that were really going on in the entire book and this character that you've, like, kind of been sympathizing with and this, like, struggle that, like, these other characters have been going through... And to, to like, kind of, the way, the way that it's woven right at the end, oh, man, oh, it's so dark. It is so cynical. It is, it is gothic, like, southern gothic horror to its absolute extreme. It, it's, like, it hurts your heart a little bit. I mean, not even a little bit, like, a lot. Like, you're sitting there going, like, like, how? How could this be happening? Like, what is this? What is going on in this story? Um, and by the time you realize what's going on, it's over. Um, and that is fucking beautiful. Oh, it's so good. It is so ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm trying not to ruin any of the details because you, you just have to read this. It is ridiculous. It is ridiculous just how, I mean, I mean, I've read Faulkner before. I've I've read his some of his books, and they are very very dark, and they do hit really really hard. But none like this, none just like with that. I mean, that hammer of potency right at the end. I mean, by the time you get to that last paragraph, I mean the very last sentences, and you come to realize exactly what is going on. Um, there's, there's no words for it. Like, it is, it is soul crushing. Um, but like in this kind of good way, this, like not cathartic because it doesn't release you from the tension of this book. This book has you in its grip the entire time that it has your attention. You know, like I was reading it in small pieces, you know, like 40 to 50 or 80 pages at a time. At, like at bars and stuff and like you know like I said the first half really kind of draws you in it really like Faulkner pulls you into this universe into this family into this situation where you just you feel nothing but love and like maybe even like you have those those same sensibilities that I had like where you have maybe had a loved one and passed away and these are things that you've experienced and it's like starting to touch on the keystones of like those dark things but you are not prepared. You are not prepared for that ending. You are not. Because, 
I mean, I don't know. Maybe you are. But, I mean, everyone's different. But this is, this was fucking ridiculous. It was, holy God. Like, it's not, it's not like a flip. It's not like a, like an M. Night Shyamalan, like, twist on a story or whatever. But it feels that way in some as aspects. It's like your perceptions of all the characters that you thought you knew are suddenly turned on their head. And specifically one character. Um, I mean, there, there are multiple characters that it sort of starts to swift, it starts to change on. But there's clues that were left for you the whole way through. Um, but you're you're just not you're not ready for this. It like the the darkness, the cynical, the cynicism that is here is so pervasive. I mean, it is just like it is like acid coming out of your mouth like you're reading it and you're going no 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 not like this not like this surely not this you know and and then it gets you um whew. oh man uh this book is intense it is so intense from the from the moment it starts um if you've not read Faulkner uh, this book in particular, I think, really exemplifies kind of his style, which is that like he doesn't really introduce characters to you. You just kind of run into them. You're living as them before you've ever met them. And that's really confusing. Um, it, at least it can be. Like, I've not seen modern books and modern novels really go into this kind of stuff or use these kind of, like... Uh, ways to tell a story, these uh, avenues, these pathways, and I mean, it is, it is very jarring, and at the same time, like, you're you're jumping from person to person, the chapters are named after the characters that you're reading as, and some of the characters see things from, like, very different perspectives um, than other characters, and in that way, you get to kind of know them, like, how they're different from other characters. And at the same time, you're still not ready. You'll never be ready for just how this how this book ends. It is whew, oh, like it is dark. It is so so dark. Uh, and I mean, it's not dark in that like sense that where it, uh, you know, like it's slash and gore and you know people's body parts being ripped off of them. It is like someone's soul is being plucked out of it. And it's not their souls. It's your soul. By the time you get to the end of this and you're reading what happens to these different characters and you see the ending, which is, whew, oh, it's got, whew, it's good. It is, <laughs> it's like one of the best endings I've ever read in a novel, ever. And at the same time, like you, like you, oh, you're disgusted. You're so disgusted, but at the same time, it's like you never saw it coming, and so you just feel, I don't know, like there's this magnificence in the writing, and I mean, Faulkner, Faulkner writes with a verboseness of language that I, ah, like, oh, like I'm, I'm just blown away. This, this is a really good book. Um, it is really, really good. Uh, it's hard to even. It's hard to even imagine it being written. It's hard to imagine it being published, um, especially for the times, like during the Great Depression. Like this, this was written during the Great Depression. It's like horrifying novel of uh, like a small, very, very poor family, and uh, one particular character uh, taking advantage of them. Um, who, who? That's dark. That is so dark, y'all. Um, this is this is one of the best books that I've read in a while, and uh, it's not like it's not the same like caliber of writing that um, really. I mean, like really gets me introspective. Like I read like a hundred years of solitude recently, and that book like really got my mind churning. This one like leaves me with you know like goosebumps all over. Like I'm you know like the the body language that I'm giving you, where I'm like feeling a little bit. You know, like off center is just like, oh, oh man, <laughs> like that was that was bad. <laughs> uh, it, whew, whew. 
Ooh. Oh, it's dark. It is so dark. It is, uh, it is maybe one of the, one of the darkest things that I've ever read. And, like, it's not that it's, like, so overpowering, so overwhelming. It's not that it's, like, just so crazy. It's just that you are lured, you are lured into such a sense of confidence as to what this is going to be. And, like, you, you're you seeing these disasters happen one after another, and you think, oh, it can't get possibly any worse than this. It can't possibly get worse than this. And, holy God, does it, does it get worse than that? Oh, it's good. It's good. Um, this is the first time that I've ever, like, finished a book and then, like, done a video, like, the immediately afterward, like, my body is like, you know, like, oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of feelings, like, a lot of things, like, rumbling in me, but it's, it's mostly just this, like, oh, man, oh, man, that is, that is the devil incarnate. That is some dark fucking shit. Um, whew, whew, that's, like, sweating. That's so hot. Um. I don't know what to call this, but this has been a book review by Lux and Hemlock, and you you should read this. Uh, it won't take you very long. It's a very short book. Uh, you can see it here. Um, large typeface. I've got a version by Vintage Books. Um, I'm sure you can find your own version, but it's, it's not very long. Um, like I said, I read it mostly just like kind of off and on. And I, it kept me engaged, you know, like I remembered the the plot from each moment that I kind of like picked it up. Um, and even with like a lot of time in between like different sections of reading it, the, the ending just still hit me like so, so hard. Oh, like dark pepper, dark pepper. Um, oh, it was good. It was really, really good. Uh, I don't, I don't think I've ever read a book with that kind of ending. I, I really don't. Um, so if I can impress anything on you, it's just that if you can, if you can get through it, um, and it has a lot of, has a lot of like very Southern language. Um, I mean, Southern ways of talking. The characters will repeat sentences and th sentences and things um, a lot. It's um, maybe it's a little bit hard, hard to parse for, uh, anyone who's reading like more no modern novels, you know, because people in that in this book are talking the way that people from the 1920s to 30s would have like really been talking, and like, oh man, you, you really get inside their heads, and it is, um, oh man, it is some fucked up shit. <laughs> it is some fucked up shit at the end. Who, oh man, all right. I'm Mike and mine. This is Lux and Hemlock. Uh, this is a book review for As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. And you should read this book.